All right, it is Friday evening. It's September the 21st, 2012. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Continuing our interviews this year with uh, independent third-party candidates that are going to be in the ballots for, um, uh, for mainly for Congress. Uh, we have interviewed some governors, but, uh, but mostly people running for the House of Representatives and the Senate that are going to be uh, on the ballot for Congress or independent third-party like today, we have Joe Cobb, who is running in District 7 in um, Arizona. Uh, his uh, opponent is Ed Pastor, running on the Democrat tickets. And I believe, um, Joe, Ed is your only competitor. And um, so if you could tell us a little bit about your District 7, uh, what motivated you to run? I, I mean, um, if you'd want to talk about that, I mean, you know, it, it's nowadays, it almost seems like, you know, um, it, it could be like a psychological condition that, uh, y you know, you're looking outside the Republicans and the Democrats. So if you wouldn't mind discussing that with us and what got you motivated and just a little bit about yourself, Joe. And um, and great to talk to you today. Thank you for giving the time today. And um, we appreciate uh, you being here for our interview and letting the public have more of their options so um, they can make a more informed decision. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you. As you announced the group, I'm Joe Cobb, and I live in, in Glendale, Arizona. The uh, 7th uh, Arizona District is essentially Glendale and Central Phoenix. Uh, it's um, the south-central uh, part of Phoenix, uh, a little north of, uh, well, actually central-central Phoenix. It includes a little bit of Tempe, Arizona, and uh, that's about it. It's a district that is a so-called minority majority minority district. It is carved out by federal law to be primarily a Hispanic uh, district. Mr. Pastor is of that uh, background and he's been an incumbent since 1991. Uh, the Republicans never run anything here, which is how I ended up with a two-way race. Cool. I am running with the Libertarian Party and I think that it's important for Libertarians to run for office, even in so-called hopeless races, because we want to show people that we're serious and that if they do feel dissatisfied and disgusted with the direction the people are being led by our government, at least there's a constitutional way to to uh, take it back, and that's by elections and running for office. So I do it every time I can. Well, this is not the first time I've run against Mr. Pastor. Okay. So as a libertarian, I believe uh, in individual liberty. I would uh, abolish income tax if I could. But I think in my district, since it is a uh, majority uh, Latino district, my main issue here is that, first, Mr. Pastor has not done anything significant to uh, reform or improve the uh, immigration system in the, in the United States. I personally would want to repeal the uh, uh, racist 1924 quota system that was inspired by the uh, very large Ku Klux Klan activity back in the 1920s. I think it's uh, uh, harming the United States today, not helping. I think we need more young workers to come into the United States. and. Since they cannot come in legally, they, of course, come in illegally, and that fosters a lot of other problems. So that's my probably my most upfront issue here, but needless to say, I'm supporting Gary Johnson and the entire Libertarian ticket, and if I were to go to Congress, I would uh, work very much to uh, repeal uh, <laughs> a lot of the federal government from the 20th century. Well, I mean, Libertarians, if you look at their platform at least, and just basically just knowing about them, um, if, believe in treating everyone um, at, uh, under the law equally, um, e equality yeah, under sure. the law, whether you're a big tycoon or whether you're, um, you, you know, just the, um, you, you know, the hot dog stand person um, and um, or whatever, um, you, you know. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And also, um, uh, it, it's, uh, you're asking people for their votes. I mean, you're not just, you, you know. Of you're course asking I'm asking people for their votes. Uh, I'm doing public speaking. I'm appearing on uh, radio shows and talk programs like this. Uh, I've been interviewed by the newspapers, and I will be interviewed in the future next, uh, uh, you know, six, eight weeks uh, also. And then we have, uh, uh, you know, opportunities uh, after the election to uh, uh, write letters to the editor and comment. And having run for office, I am taken as a person that knows a little bit more about government than somebody that has never done it. Yeah, and um, maybe after the election, you, you know, you can have people visit your office in Congress um, 
and uh, hopefully they won't have to fight like you know too many lobbyists in, in, in the way trying to get through. <laughs> um, uh, Ed Pastor, um, one thing I don't like about him, um, I can say with surety, um, because unlike a lot of politicians like that say oh, I have to look in that into that, I, I don't know where I stand on like such a black and white issue like the National Defense Authorization Act, which he voted for. Um, uh, he voted for the NDAA. I don't care if you're Hispanic or um, if you're whatever, um, you, you know, black, white, red, yellow, blue. Uh, you shouldn't like the, uh, you know, indefinite detention. I don't think. Um, right. I don't want, you know, you know, I think we need a lot less of indefinite detention. Um, and uh, I think that that's really, I mean, a, a, a line in the sand that I feel I feel like people should be more outraged about that there has been some coverage on it right now it's going through the courts but if they can do that that is complete lawlessness and there really is no reason to even you, you know for the charade anymore I mean that's uh, right yeah yeah it's it's a game over I, I mean so um, so you you you're the only alternative candidate in district 7 it's just you and ed pastor i mean do you think um this could be the year there's a 10 percent approval rating in congress i mean a 10 percent approval rating that that's like I, I wouldn't want that kind of approval rating on me i can say that well i could certainly use the uh, pay increase that it would bring those guys get about 190 almost two hundred thousand dollars a year actually more than that if you count their travel uh reimbursements and their uh uh, office budgets, so you know uh, I could certainly uh, put that to much better use uh, getting the the message out than Ed Pastor is. I'd have to go to Washington to vote uh, against uh, government spending, against the debt increase, and things like that. I would also like very much to uh, replace the Federal Reserve System with a denationalized, decentralized monetary system uh, based upon silver and gold. Uh, that's one of my goals. I used to work uh, in Congress back in 1983 and 84 on the staff of Congressman Ron Paul. Oh, wow. And so I got to know him very well, and uh, he and I worked together on the uh, issues of remonetizing gold and silver coins. Yeah. And that's still something dear to my heart. And the other thing, of course, is uh, the foreign policy of the United States, which I think is just, uh, you know, uh, unhinged. Uh, Romney wants to actually go and initiate war against Iran. I just, you know, I, I don't know that Americans ever have elected a pro-war president. Even Wilson and FDR had to lie to the American people to get elected before a war. Yeah, so I don't Bush, know what Romney's thinking. W, I'm talking about, even he, like, ran on a, even though he was the opposite in action, but he ran on a platform of, you know, no more things like Bosnia. We want don't want to be nation builders, and so uh, right. we don't need to police the world, as he said it. I mean, that's how, well, and, and who some could argue whether he actually won, but that's what he campaigned on, and, and so people were attracted to that compassionate conservatism, you know. I mean, I know that's all fake, and, and he was one of the worst. W could stands for worst, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, 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 and it, so, yeah, we have the W and then the O, and then uh, now we have, we're going to have the R, uh, the Romney, and um, the Obamney, and um, I, I mean, you know, maybe you could be like, you know, Bill Clinton was the first black president. Maybe you could be the, you know, first <laughs> Hispanic uh, representative or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. But, it's, uh, it's, I hate to speculate about these things. The, I just know that uh, the major two-party system is, uh, uh, has gone far, far away from the principles of the American Republic. It's uh, really one large establishment-oriented party with two faces, and they pretend to rotate power. All they're really doing is changing certain cronies in the top jobs, but they don't change policy significantly. It's all a ratchet effect. The uh, Democrats get in there and take a great leap to the left with some program like Obamacare, and the Republicans come in and trim it a little bit and uh, collect more taxes for it. And, you know, even the Republicans with the prescription drug thing back in 2003 yeah. uh, dramatically ratcheted up the entitlements. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the whole Iraq country's going war. clearly in the wrong direction. Yeah, and, and all the money that the Republicans borrowed, too, and the bailouts that they, I mean, Bush started the bailouts, and then the Patriot Act, and then Obama's continuing on leapfrogging over that with the NDAA, and, um, you, you know, not holding any of the Bush people accountable, more bailouts, and, uh, and, and you know, this health care bill, the, the, the um, fight, you know, the economic package that he 
passed, and neither of them, you know, even Ron Paul voted for to the, to, to keep Glass Steagall. I mean, I mean, so you know, he had a kind of a practical side. A lot of so-called progressives don't give him credit for that, but he was he voted to keep Glass Steagall while Clinton voted to vote um, to get rid of it um, to repeal. Well, I don't think Glass Steagall is worth anything. I'm glad it's gone. Uh, we need to move in the direction of getting rid of the central bank and let let banks uh, uh, stand alone, just like any other corporation. Well, it's just the order uh, that you do it. Not any special yeah. bailout privileges. It, it wouldn't matter as much if there was no lender of last resort, but as long as there's a lender. Oh, we need to get rid of that. Yeah. So if there was no lender of last resort, you wouldn't need the Glass Steagall. It's just wild. I don't think you need it anyway. Glass Steagall is just just protectionism. Let's not talk about that because I'm not in favor of tariffs either, and that's all Glass Steagall was is a tariff in, inside the economy. I thought it was to split, um, you know, commercial banking from. Um, it is. It was. Know. It prevented competition between two different kinds of uh, companies that should always have the right to compete. Now, one thing. Competition is, should be unregulated. Come on, I'm a free market guy. No, I. Uh, now about free markets, um, like one argument Paul, Ron Paul made in 19. Uh, I mean, in 2008, he said that. Um, and now this was four years ago, so the the numbers might be a little bit off now, but the principle, I think. Um, is still arguable, but in 2008, four years ago, he mentioned that we could completely get rid of the income tax and the government would still have the same revenue as 2001, which back then was seven years ago, which which actually I think a lot of people might find hard to believe, but um, I, I did look that up and, and it, it was true. Um, so what do you think about, do you think we should just get rid of all taxes? I mean, I mean, uh, what, what, you know, what, what, what's your say on that? Well, radical, the radical libertarian philosophy, of course, disapproves of taxation in principle. Taxation is theft. Uh, if you're not going to be a, an anarchist libertarian, uh, then you have to compromise with that principle in some way. You have to say, I prefer a tax system that has justice so in it, tax, and I have Gary a tax Johnson's system that I want it to be as tax. low as possible. So that's the thing. No, the fair tax is just a, a disguised form of socialism. It was first proposed by uh, you know, uh, the so-called prebate thing, in the fair tax was first proposed by George McGovern in the 1972 election. But it's a sales uh, tax, right? It's, uh, it's a. Have you looked at it? I, I, I it's have. A, it's, a, it's a disguised value-added tax, and the worst part is a so-called prebate, where the government gives each family money in advance each month right. during the year, gets them hooked on the tit, and then when they file, uh, when they go to the grocery store, they supposedly have already received their money from the government. You know, it's just like George McGovern's idea of giving money to every family in America back in 1972, so what would which we... later Congress adopted and called the Earned Income Tax Credit. Right. You know, you heard, might have heard Romney say recently that 47% uh, of, of Americans don't pay any income tax. That's because they receive this prebate, this Earned Income Tax Credit. Right, but the fair tax is an exception, and it's a security. very, very bad idea. But they pay, you know, they pay, you know, a lot of state taxes, social security, property tax, and et cetera, as well, and plus the inflation tax. But what kind There's of too tax many taxes in general? Yeah, exactly. So, so they do pay taxes, but, um, but, but especially inflation. But what do you think? Um, like, you know, what kind of do you think we should have an import tax or a real sales no. tax? No, no, that's a t I'm in favor of open free trade. I'll tell you something. If you want to know how the United States should collect tax or government, go and read Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution. It's right there in black letters. It says that there shall be a census every 10 years, and you shall enumerate the people. And then in proportion to the number of people living in each state, each state shall collect taxes, however the state itself is going to do it, so to the states, and then they have to remit their proportionate share of the federal budget to Congress. I see. So I would have the states be the tax collectors and the federal government just apportion the federal budget expenses out to the individual states in proportion to their population and let the states collect it. Some states would do it with income taxes, some states would do it with sales taxes, right. some states would do it with real estate taxes, and frankly the best states would do it with no taxes at all. Okay, well, that, 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 so that's, a, that's an answer. It's all on my website. If somebody wants to go to my website, which is w's.joecobb.com, my book there, entitled The Income Tax Must Go, was published in 1982. Uh, the Libertarian Party founder, David Nolan, paid me $1,000 to write that book. It's about 32 pages in length, but I wrote it in 1982, and it's up now on my website in, in uh, you know, invisible form on the, on the computer. The income tax must go. It, it lays out the whole system, why the income tax is so bad. And if you repeal the 16th Amendment, you would restore into the law 
the Article 1, Section 2, which says taxes should be collected in proportion to the census. And a portion is a flat tax proposal accepted as in proportion to the census, and each state is responsible for collecting its proportionate share. California and New York would send more money to the federal government than Arizona or New Hampshire would. Okay, no, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And actually, regarding your website, Joe Cobb, J O E C O B B dot com, there is a very um, detailed um, uh, stances on a lot of issues. Um, I was looking yes. actually just through the um, is abortion murder um, one actually, um, which was written by someone else, but explained very detailed and um, and so. Yeah, on my website, I have stuff that I wrote. More than half is, is stuff that I myself have written. Uh, articles and essays over the past 10, 20 years, yeah. mostly more recently. And then if I find a really good editorial in some place, uh, I will try to copy that in and link to it. And the one you just glanced at there talked about abortion. I'd link to somebody else's uh, central argument there. But I have many of those articles on my website that are my original writing. You know, uh, it's one of the most detailed um, listing of issues. And, and, and yeah, if someone represents what you're saying in, in a way you think that it would be redundant for you to repeat it, then, then you know, then yeah. you know, maybe put their stuff up there. But like you said, most of it is yours. Now, one thing I do want to um, say about the anarch, like liber libertarian anarchism, I would actually bring in a new argument to that conversation. The, I think the real anarchists actually are the people who are in charge right now, the Republicans and the Democrats. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Oh, agreed. F.A. If if Hayek, uh, Nobel laureate I mean, F.A. Hayek, in his book, The Road words. to Serfdom, yeah. Yeah. he wrote his book, The Road to Serfdom, showing how the worst get on top and also you know, why n uh, totalitarian states like Nazi Germany came into being, uh, evolving from a regulation and welfare state. Well, that's what we're all trying to avoid, yes, is yeah. the Nazi Germany type thing. I mean, that's the big picture. I think that's what people need to see. Um, that That's why, we, you know, I think it's a smart idea to vote for people that are not your typical politicians instead of not voting. Um, that's not going to send the type of message that I think people intend. Um, how about... The, the really way, the, the real way to not vote is to vote for an independent or third-party candidate. Um, I mean, that, yes, that's, indeed. If, if you yeah. simply stay home, nobody ever is, is no observer, uh, no analyst of history is ever going to know why you stayed home. If you go and vote for either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, regardless of which person wins, they won't know if you really supported them or if you just hated the other guy more. So the only way you can really send an informational message, a bullet of information. Uh, to the public or to history looking back on this election is to vote libertarian. So when the future historians see that you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 percent of Americans voted for the libertarian candidates, you can have a more accurate measure. Most people who vote for in the Democrat or Republican contest are not voting for the candidate. <clears throat> many, many people would never vote for Obama, but they certainly would be happy to vote against Romney. Yeah, Similarly, many, many people who definitely intend to vote against Obama, uh, you know, the only way to do it is to vote for Romney, a man whom they really don't like. Yeah. So if, if one of those two guys gets uh, elected president for 2000, uh, you know, the next four years, uh, how do you know if they ever really uh, earned support or did the people just hate them the least? Yeah, and, and so uh, doing these interviews, I've discovered there's about 70% of all districts that do have an alternative candidate um, that is constitutional. Some of them are independents, but very libertarian. I've even s seen yeah. some Green Party candidates that, um, that I would vote for because they want to end the wars and the drug wars and restore civil liberties at the least, and that's something that the Democrats won't even deliver. So um, yeah, you, you, you will waste your vote if you do not vote for one of those information uh, candidates, one of those candidates that actually stand for something and have publicized what they stand for. Yeah. If you vote for one of the non-information candidates like Obama or Romney, you will not be communicating at all what you want as a, as a citizen or as a voter. Yeah, just You'll like just be the free smothered market. in this noise of, of the political process. We, we need a more of a free market in our political system, and we also need to be well. Better you could consumers. get a you could get a greater free market in the political system if you would adopt something like uh, rank choice voting, I, I sometimes just, called instant runoff up, voting. Actually, yes, score voting. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's 
That's a great idea. I mean, it, it, it's just you, you can vote your conscience. That would be your first choice. And if you wanted to hedge your bets on your, you know, your Romney or Obama, um, th th then, then you can vote for them second. And, and then, um, you, you know, and hopefully the person of your conscience would win. So, yeah, that would, that would be a good idea, I think. I've yeah, and your vote it. will roll over, but it won't, it won't smother and make invisible what your conscience told you. Right. If you voted first choice for the libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson, but he did not get uh, a majority on the first ballot, came in, for example, third, then your vote would roll over to the next candidate of your preference, and it would roll over another time if your next candidate preference uh, didn't get reached the, the, uh, the finish yeah, line. Yeah, first I was skeptical. It's, informa it's an information system that's far superior in elections. Oh, it is. I was skeptical at first, but I thought it out like in all the possible consequences, and, and actually it, 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 it's very fair. And uh, I mean, how can we make fully informed decisions if we don't know all our options? And um, <coughs> Right. And, and, and there's a lot that's hidden. Um, I mean, we need, you know, I mean, full accountability. The, the way to hold these people accountable is voting no for the Republicans and Democrats. And, and you don't do that by not voting. You do that by voting for a, a Absolutely. Uh, an independent third party, someone who is um, going to take their oath seriously, call people out that don't, and um, also uh, that's going to um, be transparent and, and let us know what's going on in, in the halls, of, in the smoke-filled rooms, and, and shed the light on them. Um, we need to know what's going on. I mean, luckily we... Yeah, we used to say, send them a message. Wake them up, send them a message, show them how large the protest is. But they're not going to see it if you simply vote uh, for Romney against Obama or for Obama against Romney. If you're just a negative voter, you're not communicating to anybody. Yeah, occupy the house, have a tea party, like throw them out just like we threw out the barrels of tea on on the shores. And um, so, well, like, what what do you think? Um, like, let's focus on your district. Um, like, what 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 do you think your appeal is specifically? I know this is kind of political question, and um, but but to you, you know liberal type people, um, because I think um, well, I'm in favor uh, for the people for the people that. Uh are not social conservatives. Of course, I am not a social conservative. And so I think Ed Pastor, the Democrat uh, who's running, is a social conservative, as a matter of fact. But here is my key uh, elements. First, I'm very uh, much more strongly in favor of allowing work visas to be given to anybody who comes to a legal border station and shows ID and submits to a health examination. I think that people should be allowed to come to the United States to work without any question about, uh, you know, any quota limit on them. Second, I'm in favor of gay marriage. I think that gay marriage is overdue. It's about time. I don't see anything uh, wrong with it. I think it's just a bunch of social conservatives that are uh, getting all hissy fit about something that uh, is, is overdue, and people who love each other ought to be allowed to do whatever they need to do under the laws of their state to get the rights to visit in hospitals and to adopt children and things like that. Second, I would certainly be in favor of cutting state and local taxes as well as the federal, abolishing the federal income tax. Uh, I think that spending is too high to run away, and it's, it's going to ruin the American economy. I, I don't hide the fact that I'm in favor of abolishing the Federal Reserve. I think that uh, I'm, a, I'm a trained economist, and on my website I have a number of discussions about what a decentralized banking system would look like. The Federal Reserve is a centralized banking system. Some people would say a cartel. Uh, banking system, and I would decentralize and everything and allow totally free and open financial services. There's no reason why the government should even be printing any money. Competing I think that we should use we should use the gram or ounce of gold for our money instead of something called the dollar, which nobody can even define. Yeah, we've used it before. I mean, um, and you wouldn't be opposed to competing currencies or put people. Absolutely, I'm in favor of competing this. currencies. Okay. Great. Competing yeah. currencies is the only way in the future, and it'll be the only way to save us when inflation hits. What about the drug war? Um, I mean, I think that's an issue both left and right um, have it's a, strong opinions. It, yeah, I think there's, there should not be any crime in possessing anything. Yeah, you should be able to possess drugs, possess on. guns. Possession it should never be a crime. I think that if a person wants to use drugs, that's their own personal choice. I think in many cases, if not in most cases, that's an unfortunate choice, but it's not the purpose of the police or the government to try to control this. I think that to the extent that drugs are a bad personal and social choice, you need education, you need schools, you need parents, you need uh, churches uh, to work on that issue and try to educate people who have the, the uh, weakness of personality or whatever to go and start using drugs. 
but the police do not add anything positive. They simply do not uh, make a positive solution. They make it worse. Yeah, I know that could be a hot issue for some, but I just say that because recently I've read in the last year that we have the highest incarceration rate, and then I just think of all the families that have been split up for, with people right. in jail for victimless crimes. And, and, and yeah, more than half. I understand that about half of all young black males, all ma black males under age 40, have prison records as a consequence of the so-called war on drugs. And this is just tragic, and it's, it's so unnecessary. Uh, the police have not contributed anything positive to the drug issues in the past uh, 100 years. What we need to do is to legalize and to create the social institutions that would help take care of these problems. With alcohol, you know, they tried prohibition, and they gave up, and now it's entirely... Uh, a problem, a social problem, and alcohol is a real social problem, but it's entirely addressed and modulated by private efforts. Churches, schools, education, Alcoholics Anonymous, and other voluntary things, the police stay out of that picture. Yeah, yeah, they, they'll be able to focus on, um, on more r real crimes. And um, now, uh, exactly, uh, uh, Joe, um, what is some of your, um, like, uh, interesting figures in history or that's living nowadays? Um, it could be someone you like or don't like, but just find interesting someone that's um you know has been on your mind lately, and and if we can ask why also. Just to well, uh, you know, of the people whom I admire the most uh, uh, in in the history of politics and things like that, I think Thomas Jefferson uh, would be you know number one. I have a bust of him on my on my uh, fireplace mantle. I dare definitely admire Aristotle. I have another bust of him up in my library. Uh, little sculptures, uh, and of course, uh, in more recent uh, uh, thinkers, I prefer Hayek, F. A. Hayek, uh, famous economist. He won the Nobel Prize in economics, and he was also a great social philosopher. I've read uh, most of the books that Hayek wrote, and I'm really b impressed. He, Hayek, was the one that came up with the idea of competition and currency, and that really sparked my imagination. Before I started working for Ron Paul. And that's how Ron Paul learned of it. I brought to Ron Paul's attention the idea that you don't need a central bank. You don't need a Federal Reserve. Uh, we do not want to restore the classical gold standard, which was only a gold decoration of the central bank. What we need is to have competition. And the ounce or gram of gold is the primary unit to compete with the old paper dollar. And the government should get out of the dollar business. Yeah, we the don't government need should these return to gold and silver coins. Yeah, and we don't need these Democrats either. They're a representation of inflation, and they're overinflated, and it's time that um, I think we deflate them um, and, and also uh, get them, force them to have a real job. I mean, um, I think that should be the motto instead of shame. Uh, it should be get a real job and, um, and stop, um, y y you know, sucking, being psychic vampires uh, to the American people and running us in circles, and Republicans are always getting well, us... Well, the Democratic in, Party uh, is basically the party of, of uh, government employee labor unions. That's how the Lib Democratic Party and, gets all of its money, from dues collected liberties. compulsorily from government employees. And the Democratic Party, therefore, is the party that stands for larger and larger government because the people that pay for the Democratic Party get their salary from the taxpayer when the government grows. So it's a vicious cycle, and I think that the only way to uh, take America back is to have maybe a, a tax revolt or certainly to uh, talk up the idea that the government is wasting too much money. Too many things that government employees do should not be government tasks anyway, like schools. Those should all be private. Yeah, and the Democrats, I mean, they're, they're also the ones, I mean, the, remember, the Democrats already had a full house, just like the Republicans had a full house already in, in this century, and um, they're both giving the chance, having a full house, and they both um, ruin that chance. That's why Americans keep voting back and forth, because they don't want either party to ha be there for too long. That's right, and, 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 and they don't know how to break the cycle. Yeah, so I think we're getting close to breaking that cycle, that vicious cycle it, it, it's it's uh, you, you know almost just like a vicious cycle you might see in a family or something and, and this is just a bigger uh, macrocosm of it so, i mean the democrats also they're the ones who are violating our civil liberties continuing the drug war um introducing yeah. the merger of corporation and states uh, i mean you know they're just as bought out by goldman sachs as as the republicans are and um so more so uh, more so. democrats get more big business mo big financial uh, money from wall street 
Uh, Obama got, uh, I think, most of his money back in 2008 from the financial uh, Wall Street type of people. Yeah, let's judge them by their character and um, and, and not who they like uh, portray themselves to be. Now, are we? Can we look forward to seeing you on any debate soon? What what are, what's next in your um, schedule? I know October is like you, you know every it's crunch time and. Um, so, uh, you know, and even if you're not in Arizona, I urge people to take a look into your campaign because you might not have someone in your district. And just like Ron Paul was a hero to many people, even though you might not have been from Texas, per se, he still championed a lot of ideas. Um, oh, yes. Well, I'll, anything, so. anytime I appear on, on the media, uh, I immediately try to put together a YouTube uh, copy of that, and I would link to it from my website. So I want everybody to remember that my website is w.joecobb.com, and I have all my campaign material there as well as all my personal uh, information there as well as essays and other a wide range of topics that people might be interested in following. Excellent. And uh, again, that is uh, district number seven, um, and hopefully that you know will be a, a lucky number for, for you this uh, November 6th. And, um, well, Joe, it's been a pleasure, and uh, and, and so you, you know, eventually that vicious cycle uh, will stop. People will stop going left and right, and then they're just going to look straight down the center of the ballots, and they're going to see Joe Cobb, the Libertarian. There, they're not going to knee-jerk react, least select Republican or Democrat. They're going to say, "This year, I'm going to break that cycle." And um, so, Joe, I'll say goodbye to you right after this interview. Thank you so much for your time. Was there anything else that I forgot that Thank you, you Thomas. to mention real quick? Or um, did we – I think we about covered it. Well, um, have a good one, uh, Joe, and thank you again. Have a good weekend, sir. Happy to talk to you, Tom.